नमस्कार अ वेरी हैप्पी संडे टू यू ऑल एंड वेलकम टू हेल्थ आर बाय अपोलो 24/7 ये आज के टॉपिक के बारे में बताती हूं टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट गॉल ब्लैडर स्टोन्स इसका ट्रीटमेंट क्या है डाइट क्या है मिथ्स एंड फैक्ट्स ऑल ऑफ दीस आर गोइंग टू बी एड्रेस्ड टुडे एंड टुडे वी हैव एन एक्सपर्ट हु इज गोइंग टू जॉइन अस फ्रॉम अपोलो हॉस्पिटल्स नवी मुंबई लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस डॉक्टर नितेश झावर नितेश झावर जी इज अ जनरल सर्जन हु इज अ डॉक्टर एट अपोलो हॉस्पिटल्स नवी मुंबई जिनका एक्सपीरियंस है मोर देन 22 इयर्स एंड ही इज अ प्रोफेशनल मेंबर ऑफ एसोसिएशन ऑफ सर्जन्स ऑफ इंडिया एएसआई मेंबर ऑफ इंडियन एसोसिएशन ऑफ गैस्ट्रोइंटेस्टाइनल एंडो सर्जन्स IAGES and a member of Navi Mumbai Surgeons Association of India member of Association of Minimal Access Surgeons of India and he can be consulted for laparoscopic appendix surgery diabetic foot gall bladder surgery thyroid surgery hernia repair surgery and also any kind of GI surgeries and let me welcome Dr Nitish Jawar good morning doctor good morning and thank you very much Jansi for a wonderful introduction thank you thank you so much for being us uh, be uh, gracing us uh, with your sunny morning time we appreciate this time of yours we understand sundays are the time that you get and you have spared this for us yes doctor so i understand gall bladder uh, stones are something which is worrisome for a lot of people because there's got a lot of responses in the registration forms and i also see that a lot of people are joining in with their queries here So, what is a gallbladder? Where is it located? Just simple, a anatomy. Me, tell me, Jee, that this is what it does. What does it do in our body? Right. So, gallbladder. I think uh, I can say it is one of the most popular organ in our body. Right. 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 which is little difficult to understand if you tell somebody that you have got infection in your appendix and it has to be removed they will be more than willing to get it done but once exactly. it comes to gallbladder people are very resistant so what gallbladder is actually we need to understand before we understand whether we can live without it or we have to you know keep it going even if it is causing problem so it is located on the right side of the abdomen just below the rib cage what happens is whenever the blood is getting collected from your gi system the whole blood will first go to the liver there it is metabolized and the by product which comes out as a green colored liquid is called bile and it gets stored in the gallbladder now when you are eating depending on the quantity that means the distension of the stomach and the fat content of the food the gallbladder will contract and will empty completely in your small bowel with the part which is known as duodenum now gallbladder if you see is just a storage organ and one more additional thing it is doing is it is concentrating the bile so suppose it is getting 100 150 ml of bile it will concentrate it to 20 30 cc and that comes out in a concentrated form in your food and which helps in digestion now gallbladder if it is functioning normally then it is good but if it is not functioning then what we should do i think we'll discuss during the course yes the doctor so now i have understood ki ye organ jo hai kya karta hai ki bile store karta hai and bile ko bahar nikalne ka kaam karta hai so ye stones right. kidhar se aa gaye hum to kidney stones ke bare mein worry karte hai gall bladder stones ke bare mein worry karte hai so bladder stones and gall bladder stones mein confusion itna rehta hai what are these stones yeah. how are they formed right so let's go to our kitchen rather than you know talking about medicine here so if you start okay. adding salt in water right initially when you are adding salt you will see that once even if you stop stirring you won't see any sedimentation in the pot or cup or wherever you are taking it but if you start adding more salt then after you stop stirring it will not remain in the liquid form then you will see the well, sedimentation you can see those particles which are sitting at the you know bottom of the uh, utensil now, now when the bile is super saturated the part forms so there are three components which can lead to this one is the cholesterol if the mm. cholesterol is high and bile salts are less then bile can keep the cholesterol in a liquid form that is one if due to some reason the bilirubin increases in the bile then also it will not be able to keep it in the liquid form these are the two things which are 
called as super saturation. The bile is more than saturated. One. Second thing, your gallbladder, I'm saying that it empties the moment you eat something. What if it is not emptying completely? It may uh, work only, say, 70-80% or even less. Then there will be some stagnation of bile in the gallbladder, which will wow. give rise to formation of stones and then deposition of calcium on this. So the, this is how the stones, they start forming. All stones, they start small and slowly, slowly they increase in size. Okay, okay. So it is, so can I call this as a lifestyle uh, issue, uh, uh, arise, issue arising out of lifestyle, lifestyle or should we call uh, this any other hereditary or genetical reasons? See, partly yes for both these questions. So if you look at the dietary pattern of, uh, you know, Indians now, earlier the incidence was less than 4% in India and around 10% in the Western world. But if you see it now, it has reached approximately 7% and females are more likely to get this problem. Now, what two things you mentioned, one is hereditary. If there is a family history, then there is a good 70% chance that you are likely to get this disease. One is because of the hereditary thing. And secondly, your lifestyle is more or less same. I mean, I do the same thing what my brother does, you know, that, that way. And the second thing is definitely a diet, which is rich in saturated fats, and that can lead to gallbladder stone formation. Okay, so अभी इतना सारा हम लोग इसके बारे में इतने सारे myths हैं that diet can cause and also diet can remove stones. So कौन सा myth है कौन सा fact है इसमें ले ना too much citrus खाते हो तो gallbladder stones आ जाते हैं is that true? So see, there are two things. One is prevention and other one is cure, right? Yeah. So when we talk about prevention, definitely diet plays a major role. Now, if you are, you know, having a diet which is not rich in fats or it is a balanced one, it is more in uh, rich in fibers, you are taking, you know, uh, green leafy vegetables, fruits, which are rich in fiber, antioxidants, you're taking a good quality protein and you're cutting down on fats. Now, this particular diet will definitely prevent formation of stone. If you are likely to get it, then it can delay the formation of stone and definitely you may escape this. Now, the problem okay. starts when you have stones and you want to treat it by, uh, you know, changing your diet. Now, diet mm -hmm. here help you prevent the complication of the gallstone disease right but it will not help dissolve this stone unfortunately even if whatever you are saying taking citrus or taking you know some kind of oil therapy or whatever once the stones are formed they are not going to get dissolved by any of these measures sorry uh, there are some interesting wow. myths so let me this. reiterate let me uh, repeat what yeah. you have said एक बार फिर से सुन लीजिए माय डियर फ्रेंड्स हुएवर आर लिसनिंग टू दिस व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इफ देयर इज अ गॉल ब्लैडर स्टोन व्हिच इज फॉर्मड इन योर गॉल ब्लैडर वो अपने आप डिसॉल्व नहीं होगा दिस इज व्हाट डॉक्टर नितेश जावर हैज मेंशन जस्ट एंड वी ऑलवेज ट्राई टू सी इफ देयर इज एन ऑप्शन ऑफ ये डिसॉल्व हो जाएगा ये मैं खाऊंगी तो डिसॉल्व हो जाएगा एक मेडिसिन ले लूंगी तो डिसॉल्व हो जाएगा दिस इज अ होप दैट आई थिंक ह्यूमन काइंड हैज so the way you have, uh, yeah, you, the way you have concluded, uh, you know, not many people are going to like me from now onwards. But yes, this <laughs> is a fact. With changing your diet, you can't dissolve your stones. So please understand this. Whatever you are doing in terms of dietary changes, once you have stones, then you will have to seek medical help. So you can prevent stones from forming, but you cannot dissolve stones by your diet. This is clear. I will tell you again. In Telugu, I will tell you once again because I come from Telugu speaking states. If you have a gallbladder, 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 you have a gallbladder. So this is what we have understood. So what are the treatment options? Because a lot of people are asking, Sandeep, I'm going to take your question very soon, Viswajit, uh, Piyos, uh, Jenny. I'm going to ask your questions very uh, 
uh, very soon. But what are the treatment options available? Right. So there are two things which we can do once you have gold stones, right? One can be a watchful expectancy or we are just keeping a watch on this stone and we are observing in certain people where if they start creating problem, then definitely we are going to treat them. The second group, we will straight away go for surgery. Now, when I say surgical treatment, then very few diseases have a treatment called as good. So, your own disease, if there is a problem. Doctor, I think uh, technical issue ki wajay se aapka voice thoda break hua hai. I hope right. uh, it, it'll help audience to if you repeat that. I will repeat that. So, what I am saying that there are two options. One is watchful expectancy. You are keeping a watch on your stone and the moment it troubles you, you go and get your gallbladder removed along with the stone. That is one. The second group, they fall in the category of symptomatic gallstone disease. They have some symptoms. They go for an ultrasound examination. The gallstone is picked up and then they are the candidates for surgery. Now, gallbladder, fortunately, is one of the organs which has got a treatment option, which is minimally invasive. We call it a laparoscopic surgery. In common language, we call it a keyhole surgery. We can do a single incision. Now we can do even robotic. So there are so many ways of doing this. But removal of the gallbladder along with the stone qualifies or is called as a gold standard for this particular treat, uh, disease. Right. So here's an interesting question, which will continue our discussion. Uh, Mr. Bashir uh -huh. Mir, Tehfeen Bashir Mir is asking, gallstones right. are asymptomatic in my case. What should I do? Right. So symptoms kya hote hai and asymptomatic hote hai, to kya karna chahiye? I think it's an important question at yeah. this point. Very, very interesting question, Mr. Bashir. Uh, now the thing is, when you say asymptomatic, right? That means you have already gone to a, a doctor, a surgeon rather, or probably you have got your health checkup done where they include ultrasound as the investigation of, uh, you know, in that package. Now, if you have asymptomatic gallstone, then we look at the other things. We will look at the size of the stone. We will look at the number of stones. We will look at the other conditions you may be suffering from or some physiological thing. One important consideration is age. The second one is, uh, you know, uh, in case of females, uh, whether they are planning family, you know, impending uh, pregnancy. And other thing is the kind of work you do. Now, suppose you are working in a remote area somewhere uh, where the healthcare facilities are not available. If we come to know that you have an asymptomatic gallstone, then it is prudent to get it removed rather than traveling to those areas and getting stuck in a problem where this gallbladder starts troubling you suddenly. Second thing, there are people who are in jobs where their jobs are very important. Like, uh, you know, in uh, people who are working in much Navy, people who are flying, those people will not be taken on job unless they get their gallbladders removed because this can cause pain suddenly. Now, if you are staying in an area where you have easy access to healthcare, then if the stone is not causing any problem, if it is reasonable biggest, that is around more than 7 mm, then you can sit on it and wait. When you call yourself asymptomatic, then please understand what are the symptoms of gallbladder, right? So Very gallstone is, yes, because that is one important thing that people will not understand and then they keep labeling it to something else. You have the gallstone problem, but you will keep on popping pills for acidity or, Correct. you know, for influence or bloating. But these are all symptoms of gallstone disease, which you need to understand. So if I have to give you a spectrum of problems, which your gallstone can cause, it will start from a very simple thing, like just feeling little bloated after eating. In our language, we call it prandial bloating. So much so that, that you start avoiding some certain kind of food. You know, we are going out. I won't have this. This is very deep fried. I'm avoiding this. This comes naturally because your body is adjusting, right? The second thing is sometimes you get severe acidity and this bloating with acidity 
can cause some pain which can be sudden severe last for only 15 minutes to half an hour and then it you know subsides it subsides on its own or you take some medicine for acidity and you start feeling better now this is the symptom which is called as biliary colic so the pain will come it will be very sudden severe sharp but it will go on its own and then you're thinking you know maybe something i have eaten outside and probably it will you know get resolved okay. on it so furthermore pain will stay if it is staying for more than four hours six hours eight hours like that then this will lead to infective complications which are called as polycystitis that means your gallbladder has gotten inflamed now and then you will start getting pain in the right shoulder in the right side of the abdomen and it will in between the two shoulder blades if the stone moves out of the gallbladder then the pain will shift to the central part of the abdomen in the uh, just below this bone and there you will feel a very severe boring pain as if somebody is you know uh, piercing some knife inside then the pain will start here and then go in your Question back the doctor I'm sorry to to interrupt you to yes. gallbladder stone travel karke bahar bhi nikal sakta hai yes yes so that is what i will come to just the okay. last particular symptom which i wanted yes, to talk sir. about is what start getting this pain sometimes it can be so severe that you go to emergency department seeking cardiologist help because you think it is mi the pain is so right. severe when they do ecg at then sometimes you know uh to the echo and then they find out there is nothing here and then we do ultrasound and there is the culprit sitting in the uh, neck of the gallbladder and causing all these problems so yes like you said the stone can travel and that is the biggest problem in gallstone disease which as surgeons we want to prevent at all cost because that can create problems in your body and if you have any other conditions like diabetes heart disease uncontrolled hypertension asthma or you know uh, you're quite aged then this is going to create make the matters even worse okay so the so stone sizes can grow they can travel they can create pain they can be floating they cannot be you know uh, symptoms and asymptomatic pain or no pain these are just a pendulum of symptoms i understand ki kabhi acidity lag sakta hai kabhi bloating lag sakta hai kabhi pain ho sakta hai so this is very very simple yet complicated but iska ek simple sa treatment hai aap jo bata rahe the 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 option option is is not medication. The option is some kind of surgical procedure. So, yeah. how, what are the tests that one should do? What are the signs and symptoms? And what can be, you know, initially, कौन 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 से एज ग्रुप कौन से जेंडर्स डू नीड टू एड्रेस दिस इश्यू सो इफ टॉक अबाउट द रिस्क फैक्टर्स द फर्स्ट विच वी डिस्कस्ड ऑलरेडी इफ यू हैव अ हिस्ट्री ऑफ कॉलस्ट्रोल डिजीज इन योर फैमिली एज मोर देन फोर्टी with each decade the incidence is going to increase it is highest at sixth decade of life it is more common in females especially after multiple pregnancies or now we see at a younger age also if they are consuming oral contraceptive pills the, the high level of estrogen can cause this kind of problem people who are on certain medication like one is we talked about oc uh, oral contraceptive pills or if you are taking some particular antibiotics or drugs which can cause slowing of the gallbladder or can cause increase in the concentration of the cholesterol in the gallbladder can lead to this diabetes is one of the very important risk factor obesity if you are having a high bmi if your bmi is more than 30 or in between 25 or 30 or if your waist to hip ratio is more then again you are likely to develop this particular problem there are certain conditions which can lead to uh, you know increased breakdown of the uh, red blood cells like sickle cell anemia some kind of a liver disease where the bilirubin level goes up so all these people they will have a high risk of developing gallbladder stone disease it is geographical also people who are staying in cow belt and in the you know uh, ganges belt where you talk about up bihar west bengal they will have a higher incidence of gallbladder stones even in northern india where they are their food is very rich in uh, saturated fats they will also have a higher uh, incidence of gallstone disease plus those people who are staying in this particular belt they have a high risk of developing gallbladder cancer also now this is 
unfortunately not very common but if you have a large stone which has remained there for a long time it has crossed the size of 2.5 to 3 centimeter then that is also one of the risks which is lurking in the background uh, background and it is quite sinister you you can't uh, you know, allow a simple gold stone to go to that level where it actually kills. So that is why this kind of a conscious decision in your own case has to be taken with consultation uh, of a specialist and you decide what are the risk factors in your case, whether you need surgery or you can wait. So wonderful, doctor. So uh, who should wait, who should not wait? Let us uh, understand uh... Uh, further, here is a question. Uh, uh -huh. Piyush is asking, wife, is, wife has 14 mm gallbladder stone, any medicine other than removal? Then a uh, lot of them are asking, Monica is asking, can I get a 7 mm uh, stone dissolved with medicine other than options? So without surgery, ke itne sare, uh, removal uh, ke bina questions itne sare hai ki Mr. Shivakumar, mm -hmm. 53 year old, hai, 11 mm, hai, unko medicines chahiye, surgery nahi chahiye. Akhil is 31. Mm. Can they be removed uh, naturally? Then uh, Sudita, 39 year old, she's also asking the same. Mr. Reddy, 28 year old. Mr. Dhar, who is 75 year old, 6.8 mm hai, and he is uh, afraid of surgery. So Preeti, 34. Indrajit, 43. Sabita, 30. All these people are asking, what can they do without surgery? The age groups, if I see the third. 28, that is 30s, early 30s, say like 45 that age group, hai, 60 to 75 that age group. Hai. So if you can just uh, break down into two age groups and talk about it. So this is this is very interesting because all of them they are asking only one thing: can I skip surgery? I mean, how to do it without surgery? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Now I, we understand the fear, which is which is natural. Yes. Nobody wants to get a surgery done. We understand the fear. It is easy for me sitting here as a surgeon and advising. When it comes to my own surgery, I will have the same fear. See, all of us are humans. Please uh, don't think that way. That you know. It, yeah, something which is being forced upon you. But if it is required, it is required. And all of us are scared of surgery, including me. So no exception. Now, if you look at this age group, that two things we need to consider. One, I said the age of the patient. The other one is the gender also. Now, if a young, uh, you know, male is having a stone which is single, around a centimeter in size, he doesn't have any other comorbidities like no diabetes, blood pressure, heart problem, asthma, then we can just watch it provided the stone is asymptomatic. Means it is not even causing repeated acidity. If you are popping That's a pill every day and you say Ki acidity to nahi hai because you are prophylactically taking antacids and you are there you know taking it for a month you don't have any symptoms somebody asks you acidity or that you're like no i'm fine but you're taking that medicine right so if that is the case then you will require if you are asymptomatic single stone in a young male patient we can wait on it right till it starts causing problem or it starts going very fast right the second, if we are talking in a very young female who is, you know, planning family, I mean, uh, uh, have, planning to have children later, then before she conceives, we should remove the gallbladder. Because so if here's a this question, gallbladder... The question, Madhuri is a 30-year-old female. I'm having a gallstone yeah. of 13 mm. What will, right. uh, uh, what are the adverse impacts on pregnancy and any other complications? All right, so that that's just asked a very uh, wonderful question. Rather, I would say she, the thing is, if you are planning a pregnancy, right, then if you have gallstone, whether it is single, it is multiple, it is symptomatic, it is asymptomatic, you have to get it removed. Because just imagine a situation: the gallbladder gets inflamed when you are, you know, eight weeks pregnant or twelve weeks pregnant, and we have to take a call whether to operate or not. Now, we get stuck in two ways in these situations. Fortunately, we have one investigation which has got, which is free of radiation. You do ultrasound and you can pick up the gallstone, right? And then decide about the surgery. But what about the risk to fetus? Because laparoscopic surgery has to be done under general anesthesia, 
right? And right. you can't decide we'll have this problem in the first trimester, second trimester, or third trimester. If you have this problem in first trimester, then uh, my hands are tied. You are suffering. You require a surgery. We have to save the baby also. So why go to this situation knowing that you can have problems? If you know that there is a gallic stone sitting there, there is a good chance it can create problem in your pregnancy. Get it removed before you do that. Before you go ahead with your pregnancy. That is the dictum. Because if you have small stones, if they slip down, then we can't do investigations like uh, ERC, uh, I mean procedures like ERCP, which will require a, a continuous monitoring when we are trying to remove the stone. If you give so much radiation, there will be a risk to fetus. And this is not a happy situation by any stretch of uh, you know imagination. We should so, not get in this situation. Yeah, females, especially in their fertility period, who are trying to conceive, they sh they are yes. absolutely uh, a go for surgery or removal of gallbladder. So that is what Dr. Nitish Javar has uh, reiterated. So please continue with the other uh, categories who require surgery. All right. The second thing which I talked about is the presence of comorbidity and age. See, now if you are 73 and you have a gallstone which is causing problem, you're not going to get any younger, right? And you are youngest today. So take a call early rather than getting in a situation where you become a high risk candidate for anesthesia. Now just imagine I do a surgery electively which takes less than half an hour. The gallbladder comes out easily. You can go home the same day or the next day. Vis a vis, you come with an inflamed gallbladder, but there is a high risk of anesthesia. We operate you, and then you are recovering in ICU. We are keeping you for five to seven days, and then ultimately you are increasing the risk. So, if yeah. you have symptoms of gallstone disease, it is advisable to get it removed, irrespective of the size, if your age is more. But second, if you have diabetes, now diabetes is little notorious because when a diabetic person comes and tells me that I am asymptomatic, I don't trust him. Why? Because the diabetes will cause problem with the nerves in such a way that your pain tolerance is very high. So much so that ah. the people with diabetes will have a silent heart attack. They will not even know about it. And say after two years, somebody does a ECG and they will ask him, Ki, uh, you, do you have a history of a heart problem in the past? And this guy says, no, because their pain tolerance is very high. Not because of their tolerance per se, but because of the diabetes, they will not feel pain at all. So the pain, which is not being felt, goes as asymptomatic, but they are developing some problem in their gallbladder and they can come suddenly with severe infection when there is an infection in the gallbladder in a diabetic patient, then the sugars also they go haywire. So you know it is like yeah. we have to control the sugar, we have to remove this, and unnecessary the screen, uh, uh, risk increases. Right. So so adults who are above sixty to seventy, they should be getting their uh, uh, surgery done, whatever condition that they are in, because they're not getting any younger by day. Is your suggestion? So uh, here's the next uh, question, which is most importantly bothering many people. That is, they've got their surgery done, the gallbladder removed. So they are yeah. worried about the quality of life. Let me quickly put who, who, who all have uh, uh, posted this question. Quickly. Yeah, I think it is interesting to see what they have written. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Quickly, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I just missed my question uh, chat. Yes, uh, Srujana says gallbladder removed seven years ago. Uh, what should I stick to as a diet plan? And uh, should I be going with a uh, strict no oil diet? And uh, somebody, uh, Sandeep, no, Sandeep Kani. Huh, Bishwajit Chatterjee, my gallbladder was removed uh, in 2011. In future, will I face any problem? And what else that I, ha I can take as a preventive uh, measures? And uh, Jaina Mitra, is there a chance of gallstone repeating even after gallbladder is removed? And a lot of others are also asking something similar. 
Right. So see, uh, it's a very uh, common question that whenever I say that, you know, we will go uh, remove your gallbladder along with the stones, it comes to them as a surprise that why not only remove the stone and leave the gallbladder because it is a exactly. part of the body. Why lose it? Right. But if you have got it removed so many years back, seven years back in 2011, there is no point worrying about the gallstones now because we have removed the offending organ itself. Like there is no gallbladder, there won't be any gallstones, right? But even if you don't have gallstones and you go to any uh, uh, medical practitioner, maintaining a good weight, doing exercise daily, increasing the fiber intake in your diet, take a good protein diet, it, it goes irrespective whether you have gallstones or you don't have gallstones. Now, people who are at a very high risk of developing uh, gallbladder stones, probably may still have some stones formed in the remaining duct, but they are a very specific group. They require a very specialized follow-up after the surgery. They are even told that they have to come back for follow-up and keep following up with us. People like you, those who are asking questions, my advice when they come to me on fifth day of their surgery is please don't come back to me again. Right, so that is only one follow up which is required and that's fine so you know you don't have any it, long term it's literally like practice. you're giving them a boom give me pass are ki zarurat hai ya nahi ye bardar yeah it's not required don't get panic yeah it's lovely lovely what they do i mean see you will get got used to this see you start avoiding a high fat diet for two or three weeks and then you start slowly and then you're good to go then lifelong it is like just one odd thing, you know, nothing. So I mean, any long -term or anything that they need to be mindful of? Once there's a... Uh, a two, to four, two to four weeks, yes. They have to avoid a large meal and they have to avoid a fatty meal. So our usual advice is small, frequent meals and cut down on milk and milk products and deep fried things like that. But slowly, after two or three weeks, you can go back to your normal diet, which you were having before surgery. Right, sir. So here's Joseph Raja Pillai ji who's asking uh, about gallbladder polyps. 59 year old, I've been having uh, this since more than 12 years, varying between 4 to 6 mm polyps. Ultrasound yearly follow up uh, is being done, but a uh, mild uh, bilirubin buildup is noted. What can I do about these? Yeah, Mr. Pillai, that's a very good thing that you're observing it on a yearly basis. What? No, polyp is one of a very specific uh, condition which we see in gallbladders the dilemma is that this polyp whether to observe or whether to get it removed and when we say removal it is removal of the gallbladder stone so if you have a single polyp which is reaching around 10 mm in size then your risk of developing a gallbladder cancer is very high these are this if you have multiple polyps which are sub centimeter less than sub uh, centimeter so if you have small polyps which are not growing very fast, then we can observe them. If mm. you have multiple polyps and one of them starts going faster, then even before it reaches the size of 10 mm, you should get your gallbladder removed. Now he's saying he has been observing since last 12 years and if there is no significant change you can still observe this but the moment the day your consultant or surgeon feels that it is going in a risky range then please get it removed the problem which we have with people who get their gallbladders removed for polyp they will have some indigestion issue for a little longer time see when we are operating for gallstones your gallbladder is already not working. It is like, you know, uh, firing a servant who is not working as it is. It won't change anything in your functioning. But if we are removing a gallbladder with a polyp, it's a functioning gallbladder. Your body takes time to adjust to that. In gallstones, since they are forming slowly, your body get used to that change. So when we remove the gallbladder, there's hardly any change. Your body knows it was already not there. And a, a useless fellow gone doesn't make any sense. Yes, but in polyps, yes, it does. So, Mr. Pillai, if you are following up this, then it is good. If you find any change or frequent rise in the size of the polyps, 
then you please consult your uh, surgeon and get it removed before it gets worse. Great. So one quick question, doctor. A uh, blood checkup, kuch karwana hai yearly ya ultrasound bus hai. What are the tests that you recommend for a healthy individual and also an individual who is already having some kind of uh, issues with gallbladder? two important things which we suggest one is ultrasound now ultrasound now it is see uh, there was a study where they found out that the incidence of gallstones have gone up because more and more, more people are getting their ultrasound so they had, they had it earlier also but since they were not doing ultrasounds we were not knowing now because of the availability and ease of this investigation it is advisable to follow your stone with an ultrasound or if you feel that you may have a gallbladder stone disease please go for ultrasound that is one and second important test is a blood test it is called as liver function test which will give you a fair idea whether because of the stones your liver is getting affected or because of the liver you have a higher chance of developing stones so, so all these the tests can be booked on apollo 24 7 and there are doctor curated packages yeah. The packages which can exclusively take care of your gallstones as well. So, Doctor, one more question. Uh, while they're doing the, uh, the regular liver function tests and all, how important is to manage cholesterol and monitor cholesterol tests? Yes, it is. See, these two things are interlinked. So, if your cholesterol level is high, then you are on an increased risk of having a gallstone disease. If you are on cholesterol lowering drugs, then also you have a higher a chance of developing a gallstone disease. So it is like both ways, the risk is little higher than a normal individual who has got a normal cholesterol level. Because when you're taking these drugs, the excess cholesterol is getting excreted through the gallbladder and that will increase the chances of gallstone disease. So that is one thing, since you asked me specific about gallbladder stones, LFT and ultrasound. The best way is to stick to health checkup yearly. So if you are more than 35 to 40 years of age, you should do an annual health checkup. And I think Kapora, we have wonderful packages for that. So you can get, you know, all the things sorted in one go. Because in body, it doesn't work in isolation. The one thing is related to other. You are saying, I don't have a history of gallstone disease. But if you are overweight, you're likely to get it. So there is not one reason which is leading to this. It's not as simple as having malaria. That there are no mosquito bite, there is no malaria. It is not so, like that. Also, like I understand keeping a track record of your previous medical history by doing an annual checkup gives a larger insight into your health, and that should be helping them to understand. body changes So this is very important to get an annual health checkup, according to me. Right now, one more thing here I want to mention that what we see sometimes people come with very interesting findings, and you know it's a very intelligent way of looking at things. Somebody comes to me with a stone which is around 9 mm in size, right? And then on annual checkup, they go up again and they find that the stone has become 8 mm now. It has gone down by 1 millimeter. And this particular person was taking some medicine, whichever. What they start feeling that this particular medicine is working. The gallbladder stone is reducing in size. And then irrespective of what doctor says, it is happening. You know, there is a evidence to this. I have got an ultrasound report where the gallbladder stone is actually shrinking. So probably that medicine is working. Now, please understand when you do an ultrasound, it is a 2D investigation. Now, if I am suppose holding my mobile like this, can you see this, right? Yes. So when you are seeing this, you will measure it like this in this dimension. Yes. Now, gallbladder being a little wider organ and these stones, not being completely spherical in shape Visible. sometimes it, it moves a little bit now if it moves like this this becomes the front so i am right. holding the same thing but what you are seeing is little smaller so because of this angulation sometimes there is discrepancy in size and we hear it very commonly in our opds that they will come and say but you were saying that the gallstone is not going to go but this particular medicine is working my gallbladder stone is getting smaller and I always tell them that if I know this particular medicine, I will leave surgery and start doing that only because then I will have more patients and more money because of that. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Yes. 
So hands down, again, we don't have an, uh, still uh, the medical science doesn't have an option which is called uh, decreasing the stones in size or removing the stones through medication. The only option is uh, surgery right now. Yes, doctor. Right. So just one thing which I want to mention here that there are certain drugs which can work on gallstones provided you catch it early. Now, sometimes, you know, people are thinking that, uh, you know, I don't have any risk factor. My body weight is normal. The BMI is good. I am on a specific diet. Now, this specific diet is like you're fasting for a very long time. So what you're doing, we are talking about the gallbladder stagnation, right? That when you eat, it contracts and everything comes out. Now, if you're fasting for say 24 hours or you cut down fats completely because you have taken a package where it has been uh, you know guaranteed that you will lose a particular kg of weight during this period so you stop taking fats completely now if you are not taking fats you have created physiological gallbladder stagnation now your gallbladder is not contracting now if it is not doing that your bile will become thick it is called as lithogenic bile. Now, if we come across people who are having sludge or sand-like particles in the bile, which glitter on sonography, then we put them on certain medications. These medications are to be taken for at least six to nine months. And usually, if it is a normal functioning gallbladder and you have created this kind of a situation, this will definitely make your bile normal and then you will not have stone formation or the requirement for surgery. Now, Very if you interesting, allow... Doctor. Yeah. doctor, let me, while, while you're addressing this issue, there are two questions of, uh, regarding the same. Uh, one, yes. Mr. Jamin uh, Patel is asking, what are the mm -hmm. effects of fasting on gall gallbladder stone? Two, uh, here's a son who is 14 year old, who mm -hmm. are you trader in Kanam Nahi hai. Son is 15 year old and is having gallbladder right. sludge but the ultrasound is not clear. Uh, it shows chaos between gallstones and gallbladder sludge. What can be reason and uh, is it sludge or stones? What can be the uh, treatment options? All right. So, like I said, what I was talking about, the medications we can give for sludge, right? Because then if there is no risk factor, see, people who are very young, young children, they will have like some underlying... Like 15-year-old son here. Yes, so they will have some underlying condition which is making him more prone to develop the gallbladder stones, right? Now, one important thing, if you have done one ultrasound and it is not giving you a clear-cut idea, there is no harm in repeating the ultrasound after a longer fasting time. You know, sometimes they say you come after four hours of fasting, you go there and the gallbladder will be partially empty and you will not have a proper interface to diagnose the gallstones. Now, sludge and gallstones, they will look very different on uh, ultrasound. If it is only sludge, there is no risk factor which is leading your son to develop this particular problem. You can take some medications, wait for a month, and then again go back and get a sonography done. But this has to be done under the supervision of a surgeon. See, just one question on this particular talk is not enough to address this problem. This is quite specific and take it seriously because sludge has the propensity to move out of the gallbladder and cause blockage in the common bile duct, which can lead to conditions like cholangitis or pancreatitis, which are not good to have at this young age. They will have their lifetime content. Absolutely. And uh, his son is also having severe pain in the abdomen and under the rib cage. So I think uh, right. Dr. Nitish Javad can be consulted. Right. This is not the platform uh, to address it further. Your uh, link to consult you is given in the chat box and also description box. What do you want to add here, doctor? Right. It is very specific. That symptomatic thing, removal of the gallbladder, always a better choice. Because the complications are horrendous. We don't want that. I would not like those complications to happen to any of my family members. So when we see these people suffering and then they come with the idea, I knew it, I have a stone since last seven years. It was not troubling, so I'm not getting it done. But when you see them suffering, a disease which you can treat in a day's time is taking a month and they are, you know, out of work and so many things which comes along with that. It is better if you have a problem, symptomatic gallstone, sludge, small stone, bigger stone, doesn't matter. Go to a surgeon, 
immediately seek opinion and then only you will start analyzing whether the sonography report is picking this or that uh, next question is interesting. So, uh, Ramya Nagraj had a gallbladder surgery six years ago in an emergency. The clips are causing further damages. Small intestine gangrene surgery, hernia. Anything apart from surgery that can treat it? I didn't get the question. Clips are causing yeah. problem means what? Uh, is it clear? On I, the, I thought, yeah, I thought the everything clips. I'll read the question again. Ramya Nagraj had a gallbladder surgery six years ago in an emergency. The clips okay. are causing further damages. Small intestine mm -hmm. gangrene surgery, hernia. Anything apart from surgery that can treat it. This is what uh, she's typed. Ramya, if you want to explain uh, further, please go ahead and type. Uh, right. Yeah, we will take uh, time to, uh, uh, to type. I think in this question, it's quite interesting, but I want to know the full details because this is quite confusing. Yeah. Right. Ramya, please, so I uh, think Ramya, if you can give us a little detailed description, I would love to answer this question. Yes. Uh, doctor, next question is revolving around post-surgery pain, post-removal surgery. Anu Lamba is 27. She had undergone uh, gallstone, uh, uh, gallbladder removal surgery five days back. She's suffering from uh, severe shoulder, joint, neck bones and also uh, pain. And somebody who's got a surgery years back she still has a problem sitting uh, sheetal bharadwaj two years back she removed her gallbladder but if uh, it pains if she's sitting for longer time is it because of posture or because of removal the so two questions one is somebody has got it done just five days shoulder pain and neck pain and other things so see whenever we do laparoscopy we have to create a dome like shape in the abdomen by injecting carbon dioxide in the abdominal cavity and after the surgery because of the stretching here sometimes the patients will complain of pain in the right shoulder now this pain usually is a self-limiting one within 24 to 48 hours the moment you start sitting up and walking around when you're up and about this pain completely disappears right Many a times, because of that pain and the fear of that pain, you start maintaining a particular robotic posture where you are not moving certain parts because you know that if you move, it will pain. So that can lead to some stiffness and cause this problem. Generally, in a, a gallbladder surgery, we won't see this kind of a pain beyond 48 hours. Now, again, if you have got operated in emergency, if they have put in a drain, if there are a lot of pus inside, then this pus, uh, this pain may be a little longer lasting. But ultimately, this will subside. This has to subside if your gallbladder and the stones are completely out. That is the first one. Now, second, if somebody has got it done two years back, even if we want, we can't create that kind of a situation in any patient. Gallbladder is removed. The uh, uh, these uh, scars or the wounds they have already healed. After two years, you usually don't get any pain because of the gallbladder removal surgery. One, in your question only, you are answering that it may be because of a faulty posture that you are getting this pain still. Otherwise, a gallbladder surgery will not cause this kind of complication. No. So, wonderful. But there are a lot of people, as you've said, uh, ki, it, it's not easy to digest that there's no other treatment other than removal of uh, the organ. So a lot of people are saying that, is that the only option available? Is there nothing else that, yeah. That this is very interesting and I, you know, sometimes it's very logical also. And it's very interesting when people come and give you that logic, you know. Like you have a kidney stone, which is small, and you come to me and I tell you, drink a lot of water, don't do anything. And the other day you come with a gallbladder stone, which is small, and I am saying, get operated. If you come with a kidney stone which is big, I'll say you read surgery. But if you come with a bigger gallbladder stone, I'll say you can wait and watch. So this is quite confusing and conflicting. So it's a very logical thing, like how you break the kidney stone. Why can't you break the gallbladder stone? If the smaller stones don't require treatment in a kidney stone disease, don't operate here also. No? Why, why don't we have a system? People come to and, and, and appreciate that. Why can't medical science come up with something where you just dissolve the stones? Why this nonsense? And very logical. But the thing is that our renal system is an out 
overflowing system or a system which can be controlled if i give you certain if you this you can pass a lot of urine right you, you can make more one and it's a high flow system and it is opening outside the body it is like your drainage system you're flushing something how you have diarrhea and once you have loose motion then the body settles it has just expelled everything which is causing a problem the similar thing happens in a urinary system also there's a small concretion small stones you just flush it up and that's the end of it in gallstone disease we don't want these stones to come out of the gallbladder now just imagine there is a system where liver is draining directly into the intestine now because this offshoot which is gallbladder is not participating in the digestion process right now this thing that common bile duct it becomes a highway okay now if one vehicle comes and blocks this a stone comes and blocks this particular tube then the whole this hell will uh, break loose because now the bile is not flowing down it is coming in the system it is causing jaundice it is causing pain fever vomiting you have to go to hospital within four to six hours of this happening and you will need a stenting this is called as ercp and stenting the similar thing which we do in a heart block if there is a heart attack there is a block in the artery you have to put a stent in it if you block the common bile duct you will require the same now if i break these stones in smaller particles what will happen they will ultimately move out and when they move out they will block the common bile duct so this has been studied there have been experiments where they found that the risk of doing this thing is much higher than doing a laparoscopic cholecystectomy surgery so they have tried dissolving the stone by injecting certain things in the gallbladder they have tried making it uh, you know breaking it by doing extracorporeal short wave lithotripsy like we do in the kidney stones so much so that they have tried putting a stent also in the common duct so that whatever stones come out they come out like how they come out of the renal system right. but all these things are full of complications so they are not done not that they have not been tried but they have not stood the test of time not mm -hmm. ready yes uh, if the medical science had a kind of option to treat it otherwise i am sure that apollo would be the first uh, first uh, facility yes. to offer to yes with all kinds of uh, force so uh, divya nayar yeah. is asking one interesting question uh, quickly because i have yeah. just have two more minutes to wrap up two questions that we would want to take up uh, before that ramya right. nagraj has uh, typed her uh, query ramya had a gallbladder yes. surgery years ago in an emergency in the america usa later there was a severe right. vomiting after four years the surgery was right. done for substitute uh, sub sub acute small bowel obstruction yeah right so yeah. now after three years it is repeated surgeon mentioned it uh, it can be due to the surgical clips inserted during the first surgery so uh, please understand there are few things which are related to any surgery in the abdomen forget about the gallbladder if you are doing a surgery in the abdomen it can lead to hernias it can lead to inter bowel adhesions where the bowel they uh, loops they uh, stick to each other and they can cause this kind of a problem now the clips which we are putting in the gallbladder surgery on the cystic duct as we call it they are completely biologically inert and this particular surgery is almost one surgery per hospital every day even in a smaller nursing home that is the you know incidence of this and that is the rate at which people operate so the clips can't cause this problem that is ruled out now whenever you go for a elective surgery you are properly prepared for the surgery we will control each and everything whatever it we need to control before we operate when you go to hospital in a emergency surgery that time the surgery takes precedence over everything that is the preference so Correct. even if there is some infection if we are, in case if you are overweight or sometimes the wounds also will not heal normally now if there is a wound gaping if there is a wound infection then that can lead to a hernia formation later on in that hernia your bowel may get stuck and it can cause subacute intestinal obstruction 
Sometimes it can even cause gangrene, which may need to be removed. But all these things are not related to the clips. They are related to the surgery and the way it is done. You know, in emergency situations, the risk of known complications right. is always so high. Wonderful. Thank you so much for advising her. Uh, so there's uh, Sujata Bharti, your kind of concern has already been addressed. Uh, Mr. Kuldeep Rajpuro, your uh, concern is also addressed. You can go back to the recording after the live session and see what Dr. Nitish has said. One question that I would want to conclude uh, today's session is with Divya Nair's question. Uh, Divya has heard that post-surgery does liver and like fatty liver, will gallbladder cause fatty liver post-removal? Uh, also, uh, I heard that after surgery, the size of stomach increases. Is this correct? So let's bust this myth and then conclude. Uh, I, I think both these things are not true. Your fatty liver is irrespective of the gallstone disease. That has got something to do with your diet, with your, uh, you know, overall physical activity. And the kind of, uh, you know, like I said, the food, if you include more antioxidants in your uh, diet, then that definitely that can be taken care of. One. Secondly, the gallbladder removal surgery will not increase the size of the stomach. If you're talking about this uh, stomach as an organ or the overall belly, it will not have any impact on this. Just maintain a proper uh, daily activities like uh, exercises and a proper diet. And these two things are completely unrelated. Yeah. Thank you, doctor. You were very patient and very informative. So uh, let me ask you for top tips to manage gallbladder stones, the treatment and uh, options uh, available. Right. So the gallbladder stones are uh, is a very common condition around seven to eight percent of the population suffers from this if you have gallstones be it symptomatic or asymptomatic whatever decision you take you please take it under the guidance of a specialist if you start getting pain acidity bloating or some kind of uh, infective complications like fever vomiting you need a doctor and get operated immediately if you want to prevent the gallstone disease then maintaining a good body weight maintaining a proper diet doing certain kind of exercises yoga running all these things can prevent the gallstones but once you have gallstones formed then none of the medicines are going to work on this the treatment is very simple. We can do it in a minimally invasive way. You go back to on your feet as early as within 24 to 48 hours. And it is a gold standard for treating gallbladder stone disease. Please don't fear the removal of this organ. You are better off removing this. That will take care of a lot many complications in the future. In today's time, we are so well informed that we should not be lending up in complications like uh, uh, cholecystitis or cholangitis or even pers pancreatitis. So that's my sincere advice to you that if you have a gallstone disease, please refer to a specialist. Then only take a call whether you can sit on it or you need surgery. Thank you. Wonderful doctor. Thank you so much for this wonderful time on a Sunday morning. Thank you for having me and it was a very interesting discussion and beautiful questions. I, I, I loved it. Thank you. Our, our audience are always uh, engaging and really interesting audience that we have. Thank you once again. Thank you. So that was uh, Dr. Nitish. And now it's your turn to answer questions and win prizes from Apollo 24-7. Coming up is Apollo 24-7's health quiz. I'm going to ask you three questions. You have to type the answers on the YouTube chat only. Winner's name will be announced towards the end of the show. And if I've taken your name to be the winner's name, you have to write back to us at marketing at apollo247.com with all your details like name, address, email ID and phone numbers. And that's when we'll be able to share your gift vouchers with you. So, let's go, three questions are in front of on the screen there and you have to type them on YouTube chat only. Please state if it is true or false. The gallbladder can have both small and large stones. Is it true or false? Question number two, fill in the blank. Gallstones are hard pebble-like pieces of material that form in your, please fill in the blanks, in your G ke saath shuru hota hai, R ke saath end hota hai. And that's question number two. Question number three is yes or no me answer kije. If left untreated, gallbladder stones can be problematic. These are the three questions for today. 
please go ahead type the answers in the youtube chat box and uh, and if you if i take your name to be the winner please write back to us and here are the gift coupons that you can use in apollo 24 7 download apollo 24 7 and use the code ASKDOC150, ask doc 150. You can consult top doctors from Apollo hospitals and get 150 rupees cash back on online doctor consultation. And also, the next coupon that we give you that can get 25% off on online medicine orders and uh, use the code first three. This is applicable on orders above 1000 rupees and you get up to two hour delivery free as well. The next one that we are giving away is exclusively for health our viewers. Use the code HH247 to get 199 off on online consultations with Apollo doctors and up to 20% off on medicine orders. This can be used in addition to the other coupons that we have given to you. Next, uh, very importantly, now Apollo 24-7 is available on WhatsApp. You can simply text or call uh, on WhatsApp 093 is the number to avail healthcare services that are available on the Apollo 24-7 app. And uh, thank you all for participating. By the way, next week we are coming up with a very important topic. Next week we're going to talk about paralysis, how to reduce the risk, who are the risk group, what do you do immediately, what are the recovery time, period, uh, what are the chances of recovery, all of this will be addressed. So please join us next Sunday, that is 9th July 11 a.m. We will be addressing all the questions uh, regarding paralysis and how to reduce the risk as well. And the week's winners are... Ayushi, Ramya Nagaraj and Varun Kumar. I repeat, Ayushi, Ramya Nagaraj and Varun Kumar. Please go ahead and write back uh, to Apollo 24-7 with all your details. Marketing at Apollo247.com is the email ID where you have to write and get your gift coupons. Thank you all for participating today and next week for Milte Hai. Namaskar.